Hey, good morning everybody, it's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening vlog. All right, what do we have for you this week? All right, this week we have CNC engraved log kitchen table. All right, well, in last week's shout out, if you remember I told you I had a big monstrosity of a kitchen table. Well, my wife and I decided that because it's just her and I now, we didn't need some big uh, kitchen table almost the size of a sheet of plywood in our home. It was really too big for what our purposes were. So we sold it to a, another wonderful gentleman and his family, and hey, I'm hoping they're going to be happy with it. However, I'm now without a kitchen table. The missus would like one kind of sooner than later, and hey, I was thinking of not only her, but all of you, and here we are. Okay. So, this week... We're going to basically discuss the design and the build, okay? I'm not going to get into anything hands-on. Uh, that's going to be coming up uh, later in the week. But for now, let's get started. Why go with log furniture? Will it fit in my lifestyle? Is it expensive in relationship to other furnishings? Uh, how long... Will my log furniture last? Okay, these are all questions that, that a few of you may ask. Maybe nobody will ask, but I always, I always look at both sides of any coin, especially if I'm looking to put something into a production setting up here, even if it's only per order, which these beds are, uh, as, as well as the other bigger pieces of furnishing, only because of the limited amount of space we have up here. Well, we have a... We have a very nice home set in the country, so rustic furnishings look very appropriate for someone like me. However, somebody living in a big high-rise Manhattan apartment, uh, the rustic furnishings, you know, you'd probably be a little better off with that nice, fancy Italian leather sofa versus, you know, something created out of lawn. All right? All right. Uh, is it expensive? I have built pieces up here for $50 and I have built full bedroom sets into the thousands. It depends on what you want. As with anything else in life, cars, motorcycles, whatever. To me, you get what you pay for. The more you want, the more it costs. How long will it last? Well, since most people aren't going to go put their bedroom sets or their kitchen sets that are constructed out of logs outdoors, it's going to last every bit as long as any other household furnishing, in my opinion. Uh, the other possibility that we're going to discuss here, although we're not going to be doing it for this particular uh, kitchen table that we're going, to, we're going to show you how to build, you could use forage stock. And we're going to get into some of these tools here in just a second. Uh, with forage stock, though, there are different steps that need to be taken. I am personally going to go out, we're going to buy some KD or some kiln dried stock. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use cedar posts. We're not talking about the posts that are already pre-drilled with the holes in them like your, uh, your fence posts. We're going to be using the rails. <clears throat> They're a little bit smaller. The legs are not going to look as foolish on my smaller table. Uh, you know, I'm opting to go that route. I'm going to use all KD so that I don't have to wait to procure any of my stock. Now, if you want to go out and you want to forage your own stock, yes, you can, you can most certainly do that. You've seen some of the beds we've built up here. You're going to have twisted, crazy looking material. However, I am going to advise this. If this is the first time you've ever sat down and you've thought about constructing anything out of log, I would go with symmetrical logs if possible, fence posts, cedar fence posts, pine, whatever. Uh, because working with all the non-symmetrical stuff, it's a great challenge, and if you want to undertake it, by all means. But if you want to get used to playing with some of the tools that go along with this, I would highly suggest going out and using, uh, you know, symmetrical stock that you could just go purchase. And it is, it is fairly cheap or more cost effective. We're going to purchase all of our materials locally. I try to instill that in all of you. If you have a, a local mom and pop shop, you know, for where I live, I've got to travel almost an hour to go to any big home improvement center. So the time that I tie up and travel alone, I'm not saving any money. I'm not. So for me to spend an extra buck or two on an item, 
I, I, I'd rather get my money locally and help to secure my own local economy. All right, design and layout. Now, because I live where I live, a lot of the pieces that we do up here are either, uh, they're kind of inspired by a lot of the wildlife and the scenery. We have a lot of mountains. We have a lot of beautiful, pristine uh, rivers and streams and brooks up here. We have a lot of big game animals, moose, deer, bear. Uh, we have fox, we have coyotes, we have, you know, a lot of the same critters that a lot of other folks do in, uh, in rural areas of the country, okay? I haven't fully determined yet what the engraving is going to be on the kitchen table, but in fact, we are going to put an engraving in, and it's going to probably be a bear, a deer, or a moose. Uh, we're also going to construct it in a scene. We're not just going to drop in a single animal. I am going to construct a scene. We're going to go over that one by one uh, with a little screen capture software. And we're going to do your walkthrough on how to go into the free library through Google Cloud. And again, we'll pull some images out. We'll show you guys, and you ladies as well, how to go in and how to mix and match and basically build your own scene for your own kitchen table. I'm going to pick for my tabletop a softwood. I'm either going to use pine or uh, I'm very, very partial to Douglas fir. I really like it. The heartwoods in it are beautiful. Some of the colors in Douglas fir really stand out. So we're kind of on the fence at the moment uh, as to exactly, but I'm hoping it's going to be Douglas fir. Forage stock, if we want to get back into that real quick. Um, we've got videos out there. I told you I look for spalted material all the time because of some specialty plaques that we do for firemen and, and our, our firefighting community. If you choose to go with forage stock, just realize that you're going to need to let this stuff dry. Now, before you, you see a bunch of you see a bunch of stuff laid out here. What we're going to hopefully do uh, is we're going to give you both sides of the coin. I told you I am going to build my new kitchen table from kill and dry purchase stock. I'm also going to pull some materials in that I want to dry over the winter that we're going to use for other things once it's dry. But I'm going to prep them. So in the point of doing this video, we're going to also show you not only how to work with kiln dry, but how to work with the forage. Now, in this, uh, in this blog this week, we had also mentioned, let me see if I can find it real quick, uh, some substitutions for some of the tools. Now, the one thing I do want to emphasize is I'm trying to keep this job as cost effective as possible. Now, when this, this job is done and over, and we're all said and done with it, I'm going to we're going to give you, uh, I'm going to show you all the receipts of all the money that I physically spent. Now, some of the shortcuts I'm going to show you, okay? You want to strip the bark off your logs. I told you this is a draw knife. I actually got this from a, from a veteran buddy of ours, Colonel Levesque. He had a bunch of old tools kicking around. He said, here you go. Well, this is a draw knife. I have built many beds and I have stripped many logs without a draw knife. Yes, this going forward is going to make my life easier. But I've also used a green handled hide knife to take and shave the bark off the log. Alright? There are workarounds. Alright, the other thing you see here are these big tenons. These are what essentially put what looks like a wooden dowel on the end of the fence post, or in this case, this is a queen size headboard. Yes, will a tenon cutter make your life a lot easier? Of course it will, but you know what? I'm trying to make this cost effective for all of you. So you know what? We're going to look at alternative ways to make you tenions, okay? I've actually seen a gentleman cut a tenion with a hole saw. I can assure you that this hole saw is a lot less money than the tenion. Most tenions start out at around 100 bucks. Well, that's already half my budget for this project. So we're going to show you how to go in, and with a couple of other ways, I'm going to show you how to cut a tenion without the use of a tenion cutter, okay? Yes, they're handy, and if this is something you're going to enjoy doing, I would strongly recommend you buy your own tenons, okay? All you need is a one and a half and a two, and guess what? You can build about 80% of any, any furnishing that your little heart could desire. This is a three quarter and a one inch. Uh, this can do smaller things like chairs and other little novelty items, but 
I ended up buying a big set. These coincidentally are from Veritas. These are Canadian made. They're all aluminum alloy, so these really weigh nothing. Okay? They're strong as nails, but they're lightweight. The other thing we'll, uh, we'll mention real quick, where we can save some money. This is a big Milwaukee two inch boring drill. This thing is a beast and when it goes into a half or three quarter inch uh, Milwaukee drill, okay, maybe you don't own a big electric powerful drill. You can get away with, uh, I've done these with a simple little 18 volt Ryobi, okay. Just don't think that you have to go out and buy all this crazy stuff in order to make this happen, okay. You don't. You really don't. Uh, I'm showing you basically some alternatives. Instead of a fifty dollar Milwaukee boring uh, boring tool, you can go out. You can buy uh, this is a one point five, but you can get it in a two inch. This is a spade bit. This is from my local Ace Hardware. This is under ten bucks. That's about fifty. Okay, you can save some money there. A hole saw. <laughs> you know, you chances are some of you already have a hole saw kicking around. If you don't have a problem buying the. Uh, Buy the tendon cutters, hey great. The other thing that I do with my forage stock is I try to make sure I seal it. I will recommend you use this though. I don't have any up here currently to show you, but uh, Anchor Seal. Anchor Seal 2 was formulated uh, specifically for North American hardwoods up here where I live. But Anchor Seal is something that you'd go out, you cut your logs, you maybe strip your bark off them with your, your knife. Whether you use a draw knife or a hide knife or even your, your fixed blade hunting knife, I would take, and in this case, I generally always have some zinser. I have some uh, bullseye sealer up here. I seal my log in my ends to slow down the checking and the cracking process. That stuff, like I said, you decide to forage, you're going to have to set it aside for a few months. It's got to dry. All right? And by sealing it, you're going to help slow down the ends, the cracking, and the checking, okay? Anchor seal is what I normally would use, however, zinser is what I happen to have on hand. Alright, we've gone over the knife, uh, the knife, we've gone over the tools with you. Uh, some of the other ones that I can, I, I can recommend, and most of you are going to have the basics, a handsaw, a hammer, some chisels, uh, you know, a drill. <laughs> if you are going out to forage your own stock, I'm going to assume that most of you have a chainsaw or something to cut, cut stock down with, okay? When we build, our, uh, we build our beds, or in this case, we're going to be building a, a base that the table is going to sit on that's going to be made out of cedar logs, well, lo and behold, I'm going to need to hold that together while it dries. I'll have a ratchet strap for that. But most of all of the tools that we're going to see me use up here, all of you already own, okay? So, now... For next week, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to walk you through step by step. We are going to break this. Uh, we're going to break this up over the next couple of weeks because this is not a uh, this isn't a client job. This is something personal for me, but I thought it would uh, I thought it would make a great uh, great tutorial for all of you. All right. So next week, what we're going to do for the Sunday evening blog is we're going to go into the programming end of this. How to go in. I'm going to take you right. Right to the uh, right to the cloud that we have all of the uh, all the specimens, all the files are there for you to freely download and share. Uh, any of you guys and you ladies, of course, who have been following me for the last couple years, you know that we try to add to that library again whenever possible. But we are going to be utilizing free, open source, Creative Commons images. I'm not looking to get anybody in trouble, nor myself. But uh, if you, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Coming next week, that's, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do the actual design. Uh, we will take this step by step. We'll have still imagery. I'll have photos. We'll have mockups. We'll have measurements. All the punitive information that even if you don't own the machine to do the engraving work with, even at a woodworking level, you're going to be able to sit down and you're going to be able to uh, pop this project right out, okay? As always, if any of you have a little person out there, a little little man or a little wee miss who shows any interest in working with their hands, I would strongly urge, hey, bring them in, give them a little something to do, and emphasize how nice it is to work with your hands and to instill that into a child. You're going to see me, I hope, doing a lot more of that up here this winter myself, okay? Alright, I'm not going to keep all of you. 
It's uh, we got a long week ahead of us, no doubt, and uh, I got some stuff on the books that I got to attend to myself. So I will say thank you as always, ladies and gentlemen, for your subscribing. Uh, to us, to following us. Your support is so appreciated. It would not be happening for me up here without all of you, okay? I hope you realize that. And I hope you realize how grateful we are to each and every one of you, alright? I wish you all a great week. Get home safely to you and yours. And you know what? We'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out. Alright, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Be careful. Have a great week. Bye-bye.